What's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, back with another video here at Fantasy Pros. And today we're talking about the breakout candidates. That's right. Who's going to take their game to the next level? Some names on this list we're going to talk about are rookies. Some have been in the league and some others might be already pretty good, but might have that whole other gear inside them ready to just break out. But before we get to those names, I want to remind you to like this video and subscribe to Fantasy Pros, our YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out FantasyPros.com for all of our great content there. So here are the names from me, Joey P, from Andrew Erickson, Derek Brown, and Pat Fitzmorris that are ready to break out this year in Fantasy Football 2022. When it comes to Gabriel Davis, I've already been on this bandwagon starting last year. Unfortunately, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders kind of ruined that bandwagon, but you saw Gabriel Davis in the playoffs be the guy that he could be, and in his career, he's already shown a penchant for scoring touchdowns and being the guy to look for in the red zone. So Gabriel Davis this year, without Cole Beasley around, I do believe is ready to take his game to the next level. The two attack of Aloha Shade has gotten out of hand. It's gotten to ridiculous proportions. He still has a path to break out in 2022. For a quarterback that was top 10 in deep ball completion rate, pressure completion rate, oh, look at that. Play action completion rate, red zone and clean pocket completion rates. He's getting help from the offensive line with the additions they made in this offseason with Teron Armstead and Connor Williams. Tyreek Hill? Oh, he's in South Beach too. So now you're telling me Tua gets blocking and weapons added to this roster and he gets a scheme upgrade with mike mcdaniel <laughs> it's time to buy in on a massive scale massive proportions for tua tagovailoa to break out in 2022. the biggest breakout candidate for my new england patriots is running back ramondre stevenson now stevenson experienced a very successful rookie season that should not be overlooked after fully escaping the bill belichick doghouse in week nine Stevenson earned top grades across the board. He was PFF's third highest graded running back. He also ranked 13th in rushing yards and yards per route run. For fantasy, the rookie running back was RB25 in total fantasy points scored, eight spots behind his backfield teammate, Damian Harris. With rumors coming out of Foxborough that Stevenson is a dark horse to see an expanded role on third downs with James White returning from injury, the second year back needs to be a priority target as the draft slips into the double digit rounds. I have the New York Jets, and I give you Elijah Moore. Over a five-game span from week nine to week 13 last year, Elijah Moore was the wide receiver two in all the league in PPR formats, 20.1 PPR points per game over that stretch, uh, and Moore finished three games as a top 10 PPR wide receiver. You know, Moore is a terrific route runner. He has versatility. He actually lined up outside 71% of the time last year, so he's not just some little slot guy. Um, now, Garrett Wilson was the 10th overall pick for the Jets last year, and I think the Jets taking Wilson that early has taken some of the shine away from Moore in this year's drafts, but uh, don't let that be the case. It's understandable that Wilson's going to get a lot of attention being a top 10 pick, but Moore is likely to put up difference-making numbers in 2022. Don't forget about Elijah Moore. Rashad Bateman has already shown you flashes when he was healthy last year of what he could be at the NFL level. Unfortunately, at the same time, well, Lamar Jackson was also hurt, so you never really saw the good times for Lamar Jackson together with a healthy Lamar and a healthy Rashad Bateman. This year, we have that opportunity. This guy has Keenan Allen-like upside, and I do believe with so many available targets now in this offense, with Marquise Brown now in Arizona, that Rashad Bateman can actually shine and become a very reliable wide receiver too, with possibly upside for a few wide receiver one games this year. The Cincinnati Bengals have a team filled with guys that have already broken out. So it was tough to pay a exact breakout candidate, but I found one in running back Chris Evans. Samaj P. Ryan is viewed as the current backup to Joe Mixon, but I wouldn't be shocked to see Evans take over that role in 2022. The former Michigan Wolverine finished as PFF's fifth highest graded receiver and 10th best pass blocker at the running back position last season. His 2.11 yards per route run ranked fourth best among all running backs, which suggests he has a legitimate shot to take over the third down duties in the Bengals' backfield. And there's an equal case to be made that he would also thrive if an injury should occur to Mixon with an equally excellent rushing skill set. Evans' elusive rating ranked number one in the NFL last year, and his yards after contact per attempt ranked fourth overall. 
next up in our breakout series where we go team by team looking at the likeliest breakout candidates, the Cleveland Browns. And for me, it's Harrison Bryant. Um, I know a lot of my colleagues prefer David Njoku, a former first round pick, uh, entering his sixth NFL season. But I ask you, dear viewer, if someone is entering their sixth season and it hasn't broken out already, what is the likelihood that they are going to surprise us with that rare year six breakout? So um, I don't think it's very likely, but what about Harrison Bryant? I think he could be conceivably the more productive Browns tight end this year. He's a fourth round pick in 2020 and Bryant was a prolific pass catcher in college at Florida A&M, where he had 1,004 yards and seven touchdowns in his final season. He has managed to establish a foothold, at least, in the Cleveland offense already. Uh, not fantasy relevant, but he has been useful to the Browns. And he's done this the last two years, despite having to compete for targets with Njoku and with Austin Hooper. Now Hooper is gone, and Njoku, well, you know, he's been teasing us for five years. Just because Chase Claypool didn't meet our lofty expectations last year and take a step forward in his sophomore season doesn't mean he can't do that this season. I'm all in on Chase Claypool still because I think he's going to play the slot role for the Pittsburgh Steelers and that should be money. On a player that with Chase Claypool's athletic upside going against linebackers and nickel corners these are the types of matchups we want in fantasy football. Easy completions for Kenny Pickett. Chase Claypool, I understand that people are down on him, but look, you don't need to be sour on a player with this type of talent profile that was 27th yards per route run in his rookie season right behind Keenan Allen. That type of talent is still there. If we see him play the slot this year, he can break out and crush nickel corners weekly. Invest in Chase Claypool and enjoy. The Houston Texans breakout candidate is second year tight end Brevin Jordan. The Miami product enjoyed a decent rookie season, finished with a 19% target rate per route run and four top 12 weekly finishes over his last nine games. He dominated the receiving usage over the last two games. It's a great sign that Jordan should lock down the primary receiving role at tight end in the Houston receiving core. It's easy to envision Jordan carving out a solid receiving role in a lackluster slash unproven receiving corpse behind Brandon Cooks. Sometimes it really is just that simple. Matt Ryan has gone from one of the worst offensive lines in football to one of the best offensive lines, and Michael Pittman is an alpha wide receiver waiting to happen. He is a wide receiver one in this offense. He can be a wide receiver one in fantasy. Matt Ryan just needs time in the pocket. He didn't have that in Atlanta. He was on his back most of the time. This year, he's going to have that. This year, Michael Pittman will verify that, and he will become that dude. And right now, when you look at the rest of this wide receiver core, it's really not that impressive. Alec Pierce, the rookie. Paris Campbell, a guy that's never going to happen. Look, Michael Pittman Jr. is the guy, and it's time to invest in him. The Jacksonville Jaguars' clear breakout candidate is none other than second-year running back Travis Etienne Jr. With James Robinson attempted to come back from a torn Achilles injury suffered on December 26th, Travis Etienne figures to be the featured back after a lost rookie season. During his final year as a Clemson Tiger, he led the country in receiving yards and ranked second in receptions among all running backs. Etienne also racked up the most rushing attempts of 20 plus yards from 2018 to 2019, while only carrying the ball 20 plus times once since 2018. With an explosive pass catching skill set, Etienne checks off the requisite boxes of a fantasy running back poised to make noise in 2022 and he can be obtained for the suppressed price of a back-end fantasy RB2. Continuing the Fantasy Pros breakout series where we spotlight the top breakout candidate on every team in the NFL and up now the Tennessee Titans and for me, it's Traylon Burks, the rookie wide receiver. This is such a perfect setup for Traylon Burks. Um, he replaces A.J. Brown as the most physically imposing, uh, most talented wide receiver on the Titans roster. Yes, they also have Robert Woods, but I don't think Robert Woods is really uh, equipped to be a wide receiver one for a team anymore. Um, he's never really been an alpha, and he's actually a perfect complementary receiver. So this is a good setup. Like He's good enough to keep defense from ganging up on Traylon Burks, but Woods is not good enough to be an alpha. So, and of course, defenses have to honor Derrick Henry 
in the Titans running game. Burks dealt with some pretty bad quarterback play at Arkansas. Uh, he's going to get better QB play in the NFL with the veteran Ryan Tannehill. And even if he was troubled by asthma and conditioning problems in OTAs, I don't think uh, we should be worried about that and let it nosedive his ADP as we saw with Jamar Chase last year. Trail on Burks in a good position to produce right away as a rookie. Now, no one's going to be surprised by this pick here. The Denver Broncos, their breakout candidate is Cortland Sutton. Sutton has a real chance to recapture his elite form another year removed from his torn ACL with Russell Wilson as his new quarterback. Wilson has always been an elite downfield passer. He has the sixth highest passer rating on throws of 20 plus air yards last season, which plays heavily into Sutton's strengths as a vertical threat. And based on the receiver's track record of commanding targets near the pylon, I fully expect Sutton to emerge as Wilson's go-to red zone target. He led the Broncos in red zone targets in 2021. He led all wide receivers in target rate per route run in the red zone in 2019. Wilson has an affinity for attacking receivers in the red zone as a Seattle wide receiver has finished top five in red zone targets for three straight seasons. Simply put, the fit between Russell Wilson and Sutton could not be better for 2022. I'm not afraid to go all in and declare Sutton will be this year's Cooper Cup. The hype train beckons you, it commands you, it needs you to jump on right now for Sky Moore. He could break out this year and it's okay for everybody to like good players and good offenses. It really is. And Sky Moore is that type of player. Final season in college, eighth in yards per route run, 16th in yards after catch. Oh, and he's first in this tackles forced. You put Sky Moore inside of this offensive scheme with Andy Reid calling up plays on a weekly basis, it's going to be mwah, chef's kiss, fireworks. Sky Moore has the ability and massive upside as early as this season. No, I'm not worried about MVS. No, I am not worried about Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm not a hater, but I like talent. I like efficiency, and Sky Moore has them. We could see it in his rookie season. Let's go. Next up in our team by team breakout series where we spotlight the most likely breakout candidate on each team, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. We're going to go with the rookie Zamir White, a mid fourth round draft pick. And Zamir is six foot zero, 214 pounds with four four speed. That almost makes him sound like a speed back, but man, does this guy run with power and aggression. I mean, maybe too much aggression. Some people think that his hyper physical style of running could shorten his career. He's already had a torn ACL, but man, this guy's not a shrinking violet when it comes to contact and running through arm tackles. The big thing is that the Raiders chose not to pick up the fifth year option on Josh Jacobs' rookie contract. So um, Jacobs is likely not going to be around in 2023 for the Raiders. And maybe the Raiders decide to turn the page a little early and start giving Zamir White more run in 2022. So it's possible he has an impact as a rookie from the get-go. Los Angeles Chargers, number one breakout candidate, wide receiver Joshua Palmer, one of my favorite late round wide receivers to draft. He averaged over seven targets per game as a rookie and scored a touchdown in his three games with at least a 60% snap share. He was extremely efficient in the end zone, catching three of his five total end zone targets for touchdowns with a downfield skill set that aligns perfectly with his big armed quarterback. Palmer is one of my favorite late round wide receivers to target. In addition, he's got untapped potential should an injury occur to either Mike Williams or Keenan Allen as he displayed last season. His separation skills, 71st percentile equal to Keenan Allen and 92nd percentile versus single coverage further showcase his versatility. Now, some people might argue that Dalton Schultz already had a breakout year in 2021. And I'm gonna argue I think there's a next level of Dalton Schultz where he becomes not just a good tight end one, but possibly an elite tier one. Michael Gallup's probably going to start the year on the pup. And right now it's CeeDee Lamb, probably the only real dude in that wide receiving core. Dalton Schultz has already shown he is up for the targets. He is up for the task. And I think Dalton Schultz can carve out a role for himself to potentially become not only a top five tight end, but maybe even top three. And considering you're getting him as maybe the seventh or eighth tight end off the board, that is a breakout candidate of extraordinary potential at a position that's really hard to fill. 
Today, I give you the New York Giants and I give you wide receiver Kadarius Toney, who dealt with approximately a zillion different injuries down the stretch last year. It was not one single injury that kept Tony sidelined, but his rookie season was wiped out by a medley of injuries. However, Tony's talents were on full display in weeks four and five when he had six catches for 78 yards against the Saints in week four and 10 catches for 189 yards against the Cowboys. He is a twitchy, springy athlete who is uh, absolutely electric in the open field. And we saw every bit of that in those games against the Saints and Cowboys. So if we see him stay healthy this year in the new Brian Dable offense, which hopefully will fix some of what has ailed quarterback Daniel Jones, Tony is a really exciting candidate for this year. I've been getting him in a lot of best ball drafts. So Kadarius Tony, most likely breakout candidate for the Giants in 2022. Devontae Smith, I think, will benefit greatly from having A.J. Brown around this year. Although I don't believe that Jalen Hurts is going to become a prolific passer overnight, I do think he can make some small incremental advances in 2022. And I think the targets in the wide receiving group are going to be very centralized to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and really just peripheral guys at most here and there. It's really going to be those two dudes and, of course, Dallas Goddard. So, really, when you're thinking about it, Streamline targets, second year in the league, and having a big dog on the other side, so single coverage for Devontae Smith, wherever you want to line him up. I like those odds for Devontae Smith having a breakout season. The Washington Commanders might not have been a fantastic landing spot for Jahan Dotson. That doesn't mean that he can't ball out in 2022. Jahan Dotson is used to bad quarterback play. Just ask him. Sean Clifford was terrible during his time at Penn State. As a quarterback that never ranked higher than 41st in just a completion rate, John Dotson is going to feel like he is getting deep balls thrown from an angel in the huddle with Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz might be bad at a lot of things, but throwing the deep ball is not one of them. Sixth in deep ball completion rate in 2021. John Dotson, we believe the speed is real. The talent is real. He could still have a really productive season in his rookie year, despite the stink that's around the commanders and Carson Wentz under center. So John Dotson, yes, believe in the breakout. Believe in the breakout for John Dotson as early as this year. So invest in him in all of your drafts. Next up in our team by team breakout series here at Fantasy Pros, the Chicago Bears. And I give you tight end Cole Kometz, who has already established himself as an important contributor to the Bears offense. But his lousy touchdown luck has really kept him from becoming a useful fantasy contributor. Uh, the young tight end had 60 catches for 612 yards last year. Certainly respectable numbers for a second year tight end. But he failed to score a single touchdown, which uh, really kept Komet off the fantasy radar. He is bound to have better fortune in the TD departments this season, and I think he's going to get a lot of targets because the Bears do not much have much at wide receiver. They have Darnell Mooney, and then yikes after that. Uh, I think Komet has a chance to break into the tight end one category this year, maybe in the lower end of the tight end one category, but considering that he can usually be having double-digit rounds of fantasy drafts, a good choice for this year. Jamison Williams, just because we're going to have to wait coming off the injury to see the boom potential doesn't mean that it still doesn't exist. We want rookies that are going to hit the field, be productive, especially down the stretch run. We saw that last year in Detroit. Hmm. Amon Ross St. Brown ring a bell? Jameson Williams could do the same thing this year. The talent is real. We know that. The draft capital is real. We've seen that. He was 13th in yards per route run in the only year that we saw him truly get an opportunity at Alabama. Top competition. I'm not going to rule out that he can't have a gargantuan side spike week potential on a weekly basis. And if that happens, we're going to be singing the great praises of a breakout season from Jamison Williams in his first year. Even though I understand that everybody's down and they're worried about the injuries, that still doesn't mean that he can't break out and be a really productive player for us in fantasy as soon as this year, towards the end of the season. Continuing our ongoing look here at Fantasy Pros at the top breakout candidate for each NFL team. And this week I give you the team I grew up cheering for, the Green Bay Packers, and it is A.J. Dillon, who... 
Boy, I think Green Bay running backs are poised to smash this year with no Devontae Adams in Green Bay. After Adams traded the Raiders, I think the Packers are going to run at a higher rate this year, and I think they're going to target their running backs in the passing game at a higher rate this year. So I think they're going to get some run-friendly game scripts. They have a good offensive line. It's important to have that big between the tackles banger when the weather gets cold up in Green Bay, and A.J. Dillon can be that guy for them. I think Dillon is going to have a really nice year in 2022. The Minnesota Vikings, K.J. Osborne. The Vikings' new head coach, Kevin O'Connell, is a Sean McVay disciple, which means the Vikings are going to use a lot of 11 personnel, which is going to put three receivers on the field quite often. So Osborne doesn't necessarily have to uh, bide his time on the bench waiting for an injury to either Justin Jefferson or Adam Thielen. He's going to be out on the field quite a bit. You know, in that McVay system, they use a lot of pre-snap motion. They scheme ways for their receivers to get the ball in a situation where they can run after the catch. That all sets up pretty well for Osborne this year. You know, and with an enhanced role, he could become an impactful fantasy contributor. He was already a guy who was getting picked up off waivers in a lot of leagues last year. And I think there's room for more for KJ Osborne in 2022. Drake London's ceiling might be limited by his quarterback play this season, but he still has the skill set by his quarterback play this season. Our numbers. Touchdowns could be scarce. We saw that last year with Kyle Pitts, but somebody else has to step up here. Drake London had some big-time draft capital from the Falcons invested in him, so look for Drake London to be a breakout guy. Although, keep in mind, we're not talking about breakout like Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase rookie seasons, but certainly one that you can invest in and invest maybe somewhere around that wide receiver three range. I think Drake London can return you that. Maybe a little bit more if everything breaks right. Materos Marshall Love, everything breaks right. And I'm not backing off of it. Yes, yes, we got to pump the brakes. That doesn't mean that he can't have a really, really good year in 2022 with, I get it, it's real. Sam Darnold is not good. Matt Corral, we don't know. The jury is out. Terrace Marshall can still be a productive member for fantasy and for the Carolina Panthers. The yards per route run was pitiful last year. 0.5. If you don't know much about yards per route run, that's bad. (laughs) It's really bad. But how much injuries played a part in this as well as transition to the NFL, we don't know. In the preseason, we saw him extremely productive in a small sample, 3.9 yards per route run. Again, I said it's a small sample, but that means that the talent is there. We just have to believe in it. If the target opportunities are gonna be there, and I think that Robbie Anderson could be cooked, he could be washed. Robbie Anderson was 94th in yards per route run last year, 63rd in targets per snap. Somebody's got to earn targets in this offense. Terrace Marshall is an extremely talented player coming out of LSU. In the second season, we could see the targets flow his way. Jump in the boat and ride the wave for Terrace Marshall. Chris Olave is healthy right now for the New Orleans Saints. And with so much uncertainty surrounding Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry getting up there in age, I'm putting my money on Chris Olave to be the dude you want to draft. He's probably the best return on investment in this draft. And right now, like I said, he's a polished route runner. He's healthy. He's got speed. He's got all the tools to be very successful with Winston if Winston can stay healthy. And right now, I don't have to pay a huge price for Chris Olave. So I think this guy's got huge breakout potential. And I think he's the kind of wide receiver who can hit the ground running in his rookie season. You've seen me out on social media. You've heard the takes on Twitter. You've seen them. You've read them. You've listened to it on the podcast. My love for Russell Gage is absolutely real in this year. Russell Gage, look, Rob Gronkowski, now we get clarity. He's gone. He's retired. He's going to enjoy putting his feet up on the couch or maybe a broadcasting gig. Either way, he's not catching passes from Tom Brady. Russell Gage will be. And we know Chris Godwin could start out the year slow. How long that lasts, we don't know. But the talent is real with Russell Gage, and it needs to be bought into as a breakout for this season. Last year, 17th in yards per route run, 12th in route win rate. Those are really, really good numbers. Now he's going to be in one of the league's best offenses, top five in pace, top five in passing rate, catching balls from the GOAT himself. Yes, Russell Gage season is upon us. Buy in to the breakout. Los Angeles Rams breakout candidate is third year running back Cam Akers, the running back that everybody loves to hate. Now, Michelle and Henderson combined for 336 touches last year, third most among all running backs, 19.7 per game, when operating as the true lead back through 17 weeks. Cam Akers has a chance to capture that role in 2022. 
not to mention Akers has an absolute cakewalk of run defenses to open the season. Very different from what he saw at the end of last season. Bills, Falcons, and Cardinals. It won't take long for Akers to pay off his early round four ADP in a high powered offense. We all know the Seahawks want to run the football, and frankly, they have to. But Rashad Penny's always struggled to stay healthy and on the field, and Chris Carson looking like he's probably done. That leaves Kenneth Walker III available in a lot of fantasy leagues, and he could see his role increase overnight with just one single injury to Rashad Penny, which, once again, if history teaches us anything, that's a distinct possibility. Walker has a downhill run style, really kind of fits the identity of the way the Seahawks want to run the football and Pete Carroll and the way he wants to go and approach this backfield. So Walker might not be the most polished guy in the passing game yet, but in terms of running the football, Kenneth Walker might be a guy that as the season goes on, starts to grow in value and has potential to break out. The San Francisco 49ers top breakout candidate, unsurprisingly, is second year quarterback, rushing phenom Trey Lance. Lance only started two games as a rookie, but flashed the rushing prowess that excited all fantasy managers during last year's draft process. The 49ers first year signal caller averaged 22.4 expected fantasy points per game, good for quarterback four last season and 60 rushing yards per game. He also averaged 54 rushing yards per game in his three games played with at least a 50% snap share. That mark was the highest ever by a rookie quarterback. Last but certainly not least, I get he's diminutive, but the talent is big. Ron Delmore for the Arizona Cardinals. He has a chance to cement himself throughout the season and it starts in week one. DeAndre Hopkins is gonna miss some time. We know that. Who's gonna step up? Everybody in their mama is on the Marquise Brown train right now. I get it. It's cool. It might be a fun ride. The other one that's being underrated and it could be a little bit cheaper to punch that ticket is Rondell Moore. The breakout could happen this year. We know that this team is going to put up points. Rondell Moore, maybe, look, disappointed last year in his rookie season. That doesn't mean when you dig deeper, the metrics don't tell us that the talent is real and he could play extremely well this year. He was 28th in route win rate, 11th in juke rate, so we get him in those short area targets and I know everybody wants to make fun of the A dot. Okay, that's fine, have your laugh. We get him on short area targets. He could be a PPR machine in Arizona this year. With Marquise Brown stretching the field, Zach Hurts and Rondo Moore can have plenty of opportunities to just eat underneath and create easy completions for Kyler Murray. This is what we want. The PPR breakout is set to happen. So those are the names that made our list. If you want a full comprehensive list, head over to fantasypros.com and check out that article and many, many more that we have for you. And if you've got some names of your own, make sure you drop them here in the YouTube comments because we want to hear from you as well. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Fantasy Pros because that's how you know every time when you click that little bell for notifications when a glorious piece of new content drops here. And believe me, We've got content for days coming your way this fantasy football season, so get ready because we're going to get you ready for your 2022 drafts. That'll do for me, Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.